So the first thing is, is that make sure that you come to the lectures. Because I noticed on Tuesday that I had a, I said that we're not going to have labs last Tuesday. And uh, there were a few people that tried to log into the lab meetings. Because I get notices people are trying to log in. Because the meetings are scheduled. So it says, oh, this person has joined your meeting. Maybe you should join <laughs> since it's your meeting. But um, <clears throat> I got that later because I wasn't at the sitting at the computer. Um, I get emails like that. So, so uh, come to the lectures and pay attention. That's one. Two, um, I will record all of these. And I, we talked about this last time. I'm recording this one. And I don't know if you've looked at, at the Blackboard page, but um, I did post the uh, recording for the first lecture, which was just the introduction to the class, uh, and posted it. Uh, and I did it a little bit differently than I showed you uh, last uh, uh, semester, I want to say, because we're all last quarter. Now we're in semesters. Um, I was just posting the MP4 files, but now I'm, I'm going through YouTube. And so I can embed the video so you, you see the, the big screen. So you just click on it and it'll play. <clears throat> there should also be closed captions. So in, in case you need them, um, let me tell you this that uh, YouTube and Zoom both generate closed caption files, but it takes a while. Uh, it can take three, four, five hours. So um, if there aren't closed captions for a particular lecture video and you need them, you just kind of have to wait. As soon as I get a notification from Zoom that it's created the, the closed captioning, I tend to upload that to YouTube. Um, but YouTube will also generate uh, closed captions. And so when you go to the closed caption, well, here, let me show you. When you go to, well, no, I, I, I didn't post the Zoom ones. But when you go to the closed captioning options in the video, um, you should see two different closed captioning options. Although for the first one, I didn't, I didn't post the Zoom. I was really busy yesterday. I didn't post the Zoom ones yet. So I will post those two. And so you can pick whichever one you want. Um, I think that the Zoom closed captioning may be a little bit more accurate. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's talk about critical thinking. So is everybody ready? How's your first week going? Is your first week going well? It's going. It's going. It's very, very strange. Um, <clears throat> it's been a, a long time coming that we've switched from semesters or from quarters to semesters. Uh, and there's been a long planning process the last four years, five years, we've been gearing up for this. I guess it's been a three, four years. And now that it's finally here, we're not in the classrooms. <laughs> yeah, trying to figure out all your homework. Uh, a lot of professors are overdoing it a bit, I, I think, because we're no longer in the classroom. Everybody says, well, I'm just going to assign a whole bunch of busy work keep everybody busy constantly. Yeah. So <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I know that my daughter who's in high school, she, she's a freshman, she just started. Um, <clears throat> she has a bunch of busy, 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 busy work. So uh, I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Now, like I said last time, uh, you know, our syllabus is a little bit in flux. Uh, because I'm not really sure exactly. Uh, I think I may have to revise a little bit and add some assignments, but we'll get to that when we get there. Uh, <clears throat> so let's talk about critical thinking. Now, I do like to hear from you. Uh, and so when I ask questions, um, I would like you to answer or try to answer, even if you don't know the answer. Uh, guess. 
Because at some point, as a group, as a class, and it's very difficult for us to, to get that feeling that we are a class um, because we're not sitting in the same room. Because in the, in, in the real world, instead of this virtual world that we're in, when we're sitting in a room together before COVID-19, you weren't like 40 feet away from the next person, et cetera. Um, <laughs> You know, you would sit next to somebody and then you'd talk to them and you'd get to know them. And so you become a class. And you know the other people that sit, you know, close to you kind of by sight. And, you, oh, yeah, you, we have something in common. But now we all, we're just Zooming. And uh, there's no kind of cohesiveness uh, that makes us a class. And so... <laughs> you know, it's a little bit difficult to uh, talk when we're not in person, but I appreciate if you will talk to me and we can talk with each other. So that helps a bit. Straight lecture is, is very boring on my end. And I have always have the sneaking suspicion that I'm just talking to myself, although I can see, like I can see Patrick and I can see a couple of you because you have your videos turned on. Um, <clears throat> but uh, sometimes it, it just feels to me like I'm just talking to no one. So having said that, the first part of the class, oh, see, some of you turned on your video. <laughs> oh, that's smart. Headphones are probably a very good idea. Um, it eliminates all of the noise in our environment. So having said that, although there's very little noise in mine, <clears throat> critical thinking. So a lot has been made about critical thinking, how important it is, um, how it needs to be taught from very early childhood, elementary school, uh, critical thinking, critical thinking, critical thinking. Now I'm a little bit isolated because I'm a computer science guy. <clears throat> and so I, I've heard this for years. Uh, critical thinking is very important. Now, what I see in real life is that critical thinking has kind of gone downhill. The more that we seem to give it lip service, at least in the academic world, the more I see critical thinking being used less and less. And it's shocking because I thought that we were really emphasizing critical thinking. Uh, from, and did you guys in high school, because you can, I did not have any, we didn't even mention critical thinking when I was in school um, until I got to college, I guess. Um, but in high school and in elementary school, do you remember critical thinking being mentioned at all? Any of you? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes? No. Was it, no? Was it formal? Was it not formal? For those of you, I have some people nodding. Yes. Sometimes in math classes, but not really as like in everyday use. Okay. Okay, because like I said, I have an opinion or a, uh, a thought process that, you know, comes from the things that I read. And the things that I've read, like I just said, was that in the last few years, at least five, six, seven years, that critical thinking was, was given a uh, priority, uh, deemed to be very important. So I just assume that since there's a lot of lip service about it and writing about it, it that it's implemented in elementary school and high school, but I don't teach there, so it beats the hell out of me what those people do. Well, I like your background. Yeah, kind of Either she lives like in Malibu and she's on the ocean or, <laughs> yeah, the background's awesome. Mine is crap. It's very similar to, to Patrick's. Patrick has a um, office too. Are you at school? I, uh, you did not unmute, Patrick. There you go. Sometimes, sometimes the space bar works, sometimes it doesn't. 
I'm yeah. actually the boss at a small business, and I'm like looking out through my windows at everybody, and <laughs> I'm in my, my off my little cubicle. Yeah, I can see your office, and I can see the the ceiling, and so it looks like our office is at work. So I was like, "Are you a professor?" I have to be extra careful with what I say if you are, <laughs> but you're just at work. So good for you. Um, <clears throat> they are supposed to teach critical thinking because of common core standards, but I yeah. don't think they are. In, yeah. You see, that's one thing that drives me insane is that people, it's easy to talk about doing what's right. So we all come to kind of this consensus where, okay, and I'll just use critical thinking as an example. Hey, critical thinking is very important. The critical thinking process is very important. We should definitely start emphasizing this and teaching it. And everybody goes, awesome, that we all agree. That's fabulous. And then nobody does anything about it. Or there's very little done about it. So what is critical? Yeah, what is critical thinking? So what do you think critical thinking is? Any of you. Just um, and, and feel free to guess. Like I said, we'll come to a consensus and I will not say, uh, I, well, I most of the time I won't say, no, you're wrong. Analyzing the meaning, the meaning of content and determining the veracity of the content. That's part of critical thinking. That's a very important part. So analyzing what it is that we're looking at. So we're getting some information. <clears throat> and what was the other part? See, I'm, my memory is uh, going. Verifying what is accuracy. Okay, so, so looking at it and being able to understand it, and or even probably before that, we want to look at, is this actually accurate information? So those are two parts of critical thinking. There's more. Uh, so what else do you think critical thinking is? It's a skill, by the way, that you have to kind of learn. Anybody? I know there's only 65 of you. Nobody wants to talk to me. You just want to listen to me talk. That's boring. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that again. Does it have to do with forming your opinion after reading something and making your own opinion out of it? Well, yeah, um, it's how we should form opinions, okay? It's, it, it, it's an idealized way of forming opinions. So analyzing? Mm -hmm. It has to do with analyzing uh, and <clears throat> how do I put this? It has to do with looking at our beliefs. And actually, it goes, it goes further than that. So our core beliefs are things that we kind of believe uh, for a multitude of reasons. It has to do with our, the, how we were raised. So um, what are some of the factors that, that, um, that contribute? Like your core beliefs are kind of the things that um, you just have believed your whole life. Um, like uh, religion for a, a big, most people is a core belief. Now, sometimes we stray from that, but a lot of people come back. So like you are in your college years, a lot of uh, college students, um, Santa is real. Santa is real. Please do not um, give me any information to the contrary. That is not critical thinking, by the way. Uh, don't just follow the herd. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying, Valerie. My grandma was in elementary school. What was mandatory? I don't know what it is. Maybe it I missed it. Cursive. Oh, well, that's right. About, okay. Like, yeah, in second and third grade, they um, taught law. I mean, I know they're seeing. Oh, there you go. I, I missed your previous off. chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, by the way, if you don't have the chat up uh, on your computer, I think you can find it somewhere there in Zoom. And, and sometimes I'm, chat is a little bit iffy for me because I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm looking at my notes. Yeah. 
And, and so, and I'm talking, I'm reading, I'm talking, I'm looking at my notes, I'm trying to yeah. think of what to say, and sometimes I don't read it. Um, so yeah, cursive writing. I had to write uh, in uh, cursive, that's how we were taught to write. And we didn't, we weren't allowed to not write in cursive, I think until I got to high school. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, I never went to middle school, I went to something called junior high. But um, it's the same thing. Um, I think maybe in, in, in junior high, we were able to start writing, uh, printing, I should say, start printing. Um, and so I learned how to write in cursive and had to write cursive for years. But I guess that's not emphasized anymore. Um, yeah, but you just don't care. Like, yeah. Literally, it would be like a second or third grade, and then they'll just like never again. It'll never be touched upon. You'll never be creative for it. Well, I don't know about never being creative, but I don't um, know the world but if you think about uh, well. Yeah. A lot of you, like if you read things, sometimes you will uh, see people's diaries from say the 1800s. And a lot of people had beautiful handwriting, beautiful. And you could tell, hey, and you know, calligraphy is one of those things that kind of comes from that. But a lot of people just had beautiful handwriting and some people just have chicken scratch. Um, now I think uh, it, the school system is happy that we can just sign our names. Um, and not have to use an X like pirates. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, standards supposedly keep going up, but the, the, in the real world, you know, we can't even write cursively if we if somebody put a gun to our head and say, write this in cursive, you'd be like, oh, oh crap. <laughs> so, uh, we have to be careful. So, uh, critical thinking has to do with, well, uh, uh, what I was talking about before was core beliefs. So what are, what are some core beliefs uh, that people have? And you don't have to have, like uh, somebody said Santa is real, right? So that's actually not a core belief. That has to do with critical thinking. Um, and it's one of those beliefs that go away for most people, except for me. Um, let's see. Don't go crushing my beliefs. I will not. Santa is absolutely real. It's just a lot of people have some kind of false narrative. Uh, folk tales. Cracking knuckles gives you arthritis. Does it though? I crack my knuckles all the time. My hands kind of hurt. Now my joy. No, my, it doesn't. No, there isn't. Um, <laughs> So a core belief would be, like I said, uh, a belief in God, whatever kind of religion you are, where does it come from? Uh, typically, it comes from the environment that you were raised in. So, uh, you know, your grandparents, your parents, what are their beliefs? What do they emphasize? We take that on. And like I was, I was making a point earlier, uh, a lot of times in our after high school or in high school, in our adolescent years, we tend to stray away from uh, the beliefs of elders and older people that we think don't know anything anymore. And as we get older, we tend to come back to those core beliefs. So once you hit, say, 25, 26, 27, 28, a lot of times the things that your parents or parent were talking about and your, you know, the people in your family, whether it's extended family or whatever, uh, start making more sense. So uh, your parents become really stupid at some point. And then by the time you are 50, actually younger than that, you start going, you know what? My parents weren't really that stupid. They made some sense. So it's just one of those kind of journeys we all take. Yeah, I took it too. Um, although I was, I never went that extreme. Uh, other core beliefs. Um, 
the way we see others, uh, the way we see other, how do I put this? Others as in the way we view the world, for instance, is affected by the environment that we grew up in. And it's very difficult to change core beliefs because we can stray from them, but a lot of times we come back to them. And the reason is they are comfortable. There's something that we never really, or we thought about and then, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna come back to it. Uh, some people don't, and I'm, I, I tend to speak in generalities, by the way. Uh, there are exceptions to every rule. Um, so, and I don't wanna get bogged down in minutia all the time, because you can make pretty much any statement you would like, and then I can find exceptions to that statement. There are always exceptions to things. People who believe the earth is flat, um, people are inherently good. That's actually a very good core belief. I agree with you, Stephen. Um, I can do no wrong. The golden rule is an excellent, um, what is the golden rule? Don't speak unless you have anything good to say. <laughs> Treat people how you want to be treated, basically. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't speak until you, <laughs> unless you have something to say. Um, now, I laugh. I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing because um, uh, what I imagine there is uh, the Mary Poppins, um, the original Mary Poppins movie, where it's the 1800s, it's England, and children are not to be seen or heard or speak unless they are spoken to. Um, <laughs> so don't say anything unless you have something to say. Um, we all have something to say. By the way, if that was really a, a, a rule, social media would go, <laughs> don't say anything unless you have something to say. Um, what would we all do all day long if we only, if we, if we follow that rule, it would probably, if you have something important to say or something uh, reasonable to say that wasn't a complete waste of time for everybody, that would actually be a good core belief. Um, but nobody has that belief. Uh, the golden rule is, what is the golden rule? Do unto others as you want done unto you. Bingo. Treat others the same way that you would like to be treated. And that's a very basic kind of a, uh, a value. And, and if you were raised in that kind of an environment, then that would become a core belief. Uh, and you would kind of, it would become a bias of yours. Because you would assume that other people believe the same way treat other, and that's actually a good rule. Um, people are inherently good or people are inherently bad, right? That's a product of how people in your circle as we are growing up, uh, view the world and view others in it. And so we take on, subconsciously, we take on that mantle that the environment that we are raised in becomes part of who we are. And that's really what a core belief is. It's part of who we are. Uh, life is good. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, the earth is flat is, I don't think, a core belief. And we'll talk about flat earthers. Uh, because flat earthers are people who have no critical thinking skills. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading. I like the don't write a cash you can't check. That's backwards. Don't write a check you can't cash. <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. Um, so, um, critical thinking is looking at something, a belief, 
or something that you're thinking about believing. And then, or something you want to know about. It doesn't have to be a belief. Um, so let's say uh, drinking coffee, is, is drinking coffee good for you? <laughs> or is drinking coffee bad for you? What is drinking coffee? Is drinking, it's definitely good for me. Um, that's a core belief of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, objectively, is it, I keep looking at myself, it's very difficult to, I need like a piece of a post-it note to stick on my myself here, because it's very difficult, because my camera's here, and my picture's over here, so I keep looking over here, and so it's like I'm, like the, my audience is over here, I'm not caring about you people, I'm just talking to myself. So, uh, where was I? So, the first thing that we would have to do is we would have to try to find some information about whether drinking coffee is good or bad. And the first step in critical thinking is understanding that, that we have to evaluate bias. So what is bias? You are biased in one direction or another. So. It, Tell me how you think bias applies to the, the question, is coffee, well, what is the question? See, is coffee good for you or is coffee bad for you? What is the inherent bias in either one of those two statements? For, for some, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for some re religions, the, the use of stimulants is, unholy or whatever however you want to yeah, caffeine is is bad for you yeah correct so if you were from that background you would see it as being less than less than um you know i got you less than acceptable okay. so patrick is actually this is the kind of the answer that i'm looking for and he's he's almost there so how is like i said i have two questions I want to find out about coffee and drinking coffee, right? And the question is either, is coffee good for me or is coffee bad for me? So you have two sentences there. They're separate from one another. How are those biased? Well, you're saying like, if it's good for you and you're not really specifying what you mean, like for your health or for staying awake or uh, for... That, that, that's more specificity. So that has to do with how specific is the question. But a bias is something that's inherent, right? You can be biased um, in many ways. So, and I don't want to, I can't define bias right now because I'm trying to get you to, <laughs> I'm trying to get you to, if I define bias, you'll all know what the answer is. So I'm trying not to give away the answer. So let's, let's, let's guess a little bit more. Uh, I feel like, because, you know, if you're trying to find out if it's good or bad, you're going to set those expectations. And when you see it, you know, an article on, on, on it's good and it's bad, you're just setting these pre-expectations of what you might think coffee is. Okay. But how is the question bias? Because you're saying it's either good or it is bad. Okay. So if I'm, let's just take one of them. So if I say, if I want to find out how is, is coffee bad for me? What's the bias there? That it's bad. <laughs> it depends on what environment you grew up in. Yeah, no, not really. Doesn't well, yes, sense. it does. Okay, so like Patrick just said, if you're, uh, who, who is that, Seventh-day Adventist? Yeah, Seventh Loma Linda, Seventh Day Adventists. They Mormons. don't drink. Mormons also. Okay. Mormons don't have caffeine, so they don't. They see caffeine as being bad. Stimulants as being bad in general. So they equate caffeine to say um, heroin. It's all in the same category. Um, or cocaine or crack. Those are all stimulants, right? Is meth a stimulant? Meth, methamphetamine. Yeah. 
Um, so all those things are bad. Sugar is bad, I think. Sugar, is sugar a stimulant? I guess not. Um, but anyway, so yes, it can. Uh, you can be biased because of your environment, but the question itself is bias. Because how I go about trying to research this, you have to recognize that it's inherently biased. If I say, how is coffee good for me? If I do a Google search, um, is coffee good for me? What am I going to find as my result? How coffee is good for you. you yeah, gonna, I'm gonna find, yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Oh, you, you're gonna find a study that uh, it, it's extremely good for your liver. Yeah, exactly. What's going to happen? Right up to the top. Yeah, there you go. Uh, what's going to happen because I used a search engine to search stuff on the internet, and the internet is by default our place where we go search for information. I'm going to find Google is going to give me results based on my question, my query, right? And so if I type in "How is coffee good for me?" or um, uh, is coffee good for me? Google is going to try to fulfill my needs, right? So if I, I type in what are the best rollerblades or what is the best TV, right? Google isn't going to show me results showing me what's the worst television, right? Because Google wants to, to, to give me what I'm asking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. If you have something to say. That, yeah, sorry. So the opposite of it, if you wanted to search up what's the worst television or whatever, it shows you that too. So it can go either way. But you well, have to directly search for it. Like automatically, if you're going to search for good, you're not going to find, hey, this is the worst TV station ever. You've got to start. And you just got to go search the worst. Yes. So depending on what it is that you search for, if you do a search for what's the worst television, right, you'll get answers to really bad televisions, right? Those will be the results that you get. And so you're very correct. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that there's an inherent bias already when I'm asking the question. It's, and by the way, normally we don't even see that bias. So if you're already, so for instance, <clears throat> I drink maybe, I used to drink a lot more, but now I drink maybe six cups of coffee a day. A lot, to a lot of people, that's a lot. I used to drink a lot more. So to me, that's a lot less than I used to do. Um, but let's say that, you know, you go, oh, you know what? You know me, to say. And um, six. It's only six is what you feel like. Um, and you say, you know what? I think he drinks too much coffee. So let me do a little bit of research because I want to talk to him about, you know, maybe he should cut down and he should only have maybe two cups of coffee a day or three cups of coffee a day. Right? So you do. You type in uh, how is coffee bad for you and you get results from a whole bunch of studies and websites telling you what bad things coffee can do to your body. And so then you come to me and you say, hey, you know what? Coffee's not really that good for you. Here, here's all this information that I have. And then you make an argument, right? The problem is, is that you weren't cr thinking critically because the question you asked was already biased. And what happened was when you got your results, when you got to the end of what you think forming an opinion, all you did was reinforce the opinion that you already kind of started off with. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, you're talking about just like confirmation bias. Yeah, well, it's not just confirmation bias, but yes, because most of the time that is uh, an inherent bias that we don't, don't even know, right? We can think we're being objective. I want to find uh, out why is coffee bad for you? So you type in, is coffee bad for you? Or how is coffee bad for you? Wouldn't it be now, better just to say, what are the health effects of coffee? Like that's not as biased. See, he's jumped. That's excellent. Yeah, and so 
really we have to evaluate what it is that we're asking. And, and then, you know, so this person comes to me and they tell me about all of the bad things about drinking coffee and I like coffee. And so my first thought is, well, thank you. I'm being polite. Thank you. And then I, I go, well, I really don't know a lot about drinking coffee. I just know that it tastes, I like the taste. It's just, uh, some people don't like it. So, um, and so I go online and I say, well, what are the health benefits of coffee? And then I find a whole bunch of information. And, and, and so, right. And then, so then I come back at this person saying, well, you're wrong. And they say, no, you're wrong. 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 Right. And that no longer is constructive. That's just uh, gainsaying the other person's uh, opinion. So one of the things that we need to understand, and this is a very, very important actually concept, is that there usually is some inherent bias into, uh, in what it is, our starting point. And it's actually the point before our starting point. It's, it's like point zero. Like our starting point is, is step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And um, uh, but it's step zero. And ooh, black coffee is horrible. <clears throat> I'm looking at the chat. He's like, my grandmother gave me a sip of black coffee when I was six. Yeah, I'm sorry. Your grandmother kind of tortured you a little bit. Um, my grandmother always drank tea. Um, so anyway, so we have to be aware that a lot of times, even, you know, we think we're being objective and we go to search for some information. The search itself is biased, which means it makes the results that I get biased to that question. And um, I drink water too. Uh, so we have to be aware of that. The other thing is, is that we tend to want to believe the things that reinforce what we already believe. So let's say that we have an opinion. Okay, that's not a, an opinion is not a reasoned thought out process. We just have an opinion that's formed however we form it. So my opinion of social media is not uh, very good. And it's, it's, it's not based on any kind of scientific studies. It's just based on kind of my experience with social media and how much time, what a giant time waster is. It is. What's in your cup, Angela? Angelina, sorry. I drink black coffee, so. <laughs> oh, good for you. It, 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 no, I, I, more power to you. If you can stomach black coffee, I have to put like a gallon of milk in it and, or a creamer and uh, a pound of sugar in my coffee. So, so you my probably coffee don't drink is, six cups. You probably only drink like three then if it's mostly milk. Oh, no, no. It, it, it's, it's this much creamer. <laughs> right, this much creamer. The rest of it is coffee. It's a 10 ounce cup of coffee every time plus creamer, but good for you. Um, see, we also, we already have a bond. <laughs> she thinks nine o'clock is early too. See? Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> we have an inherent bias and we want to believe things that reinforce our opinions. So, uh, and however we have formed those opinions and that's, also something that's very important to understand is that most of the time the things that we're interested in and that we're that you don't have to do for school um, <clears throat> the things that we are personally interested in we already have an opinion whether we admit it or not we already have kind of a general outlook and so if you're just looking for, you know, things uh, and you come up with results, results that reinforce are, no matter how strong we hold that kind of bias, that opinion, 
things that reinforce what we kind of think we already know are taken much more seriously than things that um, negate that. Uh, we are much more open to uh, information that reinforces our already formed or partially formed or the things that we think make sense that, that fit our other opinions maybe, uh, we're much more open to those than we are to the negative. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you, when you get information that reinforces, so flat earthers, somebody mentioned flat earthers before. Flat earthers, and by the way, had you asked me this question when I was 30 years ago, say, when I was 20 something, that there would be a large group of people, and it's actually not a very large group of people, it's just that there would be a, lo uh, a lot of people that believed the earth was flat, I would have laughed at you. Because I don't even know where that comes from. I, it's still so foreign to my thought process that I, I can't understand. I just don't understand. But anyway, um, and it all started, I think, with the, the, the moon landing was faked. <clears throat> and the moon landing was faked. It, these are all kind of conspiracy theories. Uh, the, the Earth is flat is semi-conspiracy theory, and um, but I think it stems from the conspiracy theory kind of group thought. So it goes back to, we fake the moon landing, that goes back to who shot JFK, which is kind of the original conspiracy theory, who just shot John F. Kennedy, who assassinated him. and. Um, I don't know what conspiracy theories there were before that, but um, so yeah, had you told, that's so foreign to my thinking that it's, it's very difficult for me to even understand aliens did it. <clears throat> aliens did it because he was going to say the earth was flat. Um, he was going to make a big announcement. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> it's, <laughs> We have to be careful about, oh, flat earthers will ignore evidence um, that disproves or goes contrary to the earth is flat. And, it, because, and they will readily accept uh, what they think is uh, evidence for the fact that the earth is flat. Um, Aliens built the pyramids is actually a fact. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, Kyrie Irving built the pyramids? Now I'm a little bit confused. Um, I thought Kyrie built uh, some shoes. But anyway, um, doesn't he sit at home making shoes? Isn't that what he does? So, when we... <laughs> I know it's 9.50. When we talk about, like anybody has any place to go, uh, when we talk about um, critical thinking, we really have to start with step zero. And so step zero is that we need to evaluate, hey, am I even going to start looking at this in an unbiased way? Do I have some... Uh, I should probably do a search for the health effects of drinking coffee, which is uh, where we were about 10 minutes ago because he already had the answer. Um, instead of looking for the good or bad, I want something that's objective. And then I can start going through the actual steps of critical thinking, which is gathering information and then evaluating all of that, you guys need to shut up in the chat room. <laughs> Tupac is in Cuba. Um, <clears throat> uh, Wisconsin is fake. It's just a figment of everybody's imagination. 
and Ohio is real. <laughs> I've lived in Ohio. Um, so having said that, um, are we going to have labs today? No, we are not going to have labs today because, okay, so here's what's going to happen if we have labs today. I'm going to continue talking about critical thinking. That's not really a lab exercise. And what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to have the same lecture three times again. So I'm going to have to talk about the same things over and over again. And so lab is fake. You're right. We will have lab, and I'm going to put that to rest. We will have lab meetings. Um, I, I know for sure that we're going to do some on Tuesday. Okay, because if only for the reason to double check that the links work <laughs> um, so that we can all join our lab meetings. Having said that, are there any questions about anything? There shouldn't be. I'm going to try to post some stuff about critical thinking, although one of the things that you could do uh, before Tuesday is to Google critical thinking. That would be a good, and, and you don't have to read like pages and pages on it, but just browse. I, we do not live in a society that encourages people to read. And so I have, and, and by the way, where people actually do read, um, we don't, don't re, well, read something that's not a chat message. Um, so, uh, but I do encourage you to skim some things about critical thinking before next Tuesday, because we're going to continue talking about critical thinking. And at some point, we're going to actually do critical thinking into uh, problem solving thinking. Uh, the thinking of problem solving and logic, which is what programming has to do with and what uh, uh, solving problems has to do with. So having said that, see ya. See you later. Have a nice day. Uh, remember, no labs. No labs today. Be here Tuesday. Have fun. Or go to your other classes. I just sit here. If you have any questions, by the way, feel free because I'm just going to sit here. So if you have any comments or questions, you want to talk to me about anything, um, feel free to stay and I will stay. Bye. Um, I want to live wherever that picture is. It's awesome. Professor, did you take role today? I did not take role today. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I said that I'm not going to take roll anymore. I'm just going to use the, um, the Zoom meeting participation log as my role. Um, just because it takes up so much damn time and we only have 50 minutes, um, really. Okay. Uh, 55 minutes. Okay, so long <laughs> okay. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye. Have a good day, Professor. We'll see ya. You too. Hey, uh, Stop recording. Hey, uh, Professor, you mentioned something.